Hi, this is Yiran Wang at Brain Scanology. Today, I am going to talk about measuring the shape of hands using the LCPC transform and how we can tell left-handed from right-handedness. The purpose of this project is to lay the foundations for detection of handedness as part of automating hand measurements. The goal is to develop a system to track progression of diseases that can be diagnosed through hands, such as rheumatoid arthritis and perhaps dementia. Here is how the LCPC works on hands. In step 1, we first outline the edge of a hand and calculate the centroid. In step 2, that centroid will become the origin of a 360 degree radio grid that's spaced every 5 degrees. Proceeding to step 3, this then allows us to measure every intersection of the radial lines in the shape and calculate their distance from the origin. In step 4, we can linearize all intersections into two dimensions as shown. In step 5, we apply the fast Fourier transform to obtain a frequency plot that is a multi-dimensional representation of the shape in step 1. Lastly, in step 6, we can derive a single value representing the shape in step 1 by summing all the magnitudes in the frequency plot. One important thing to note is that in biology, structure is equal to function. If you can precisely measure structures, then you can precisely predict function. Thus, we sought to measure hand shapes in ways that area and volume cannot, so that machine learning models can be enhanced by images taken from a smartphone in the comfort of your own home. Our goal is to enhance remote diagnostics within the telehealth industry, which will increase access to diagnostics even in rural and underdeveloped areas. To start with, we outlined hand shapes on one side of the body and then flip them to obtain mirrored images that have the exact same area. This is so that we can pair shape while controlling for area. Here are the frequency plots of a right hand and its mirrored image. For the bar graphs, the top row shows bird's eye views of the frequency plots. Below shows truncated graphs that allow us to examine the smaller bars. You can see there's a difference in magnitudes between the middle sections, which are outlined in red. Just for illustrative purposes, we then replot the frequency plots as line graphs, so it becomes more obvious that the middle section, outlining red, has larger values for the mirrored hand compared to the original hand. The bar graph at the bottom left shows the sum values within the red boxes. As far as we know, this is the first time in history where we're able to quantify right versus left-handedness and know every single rule that goes into Y while traditional methods of measuring area cannot. Deep learning methods can detect left versus right hands, but don't explain why. Next in this presentation, I will provide rules that define left versus right handedness in specific conditions. What we did was we proceeded to work with my own hands to explore how LCPC measures shapes, and we established universal protocols for assessing hand shapes. Here are some of the things to note. When we overlay the radio grid on the outline of a hand shape, the origin is the centroid. And the radio grid has 0 degrees at the 3 p.m. location and 180 degrees at the 9 p.m. location. This 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. axis is very important. There are also three information pieces about the hands that we put together to organize scenarios of hands into categories, being is the palm facing up or down? Are the fingers heading north or south? And is the right thumb to the left at 9 p.m. or right at 3 p.m.? We were able to tell left hand from right hand by looking at the sum of the middle bins of the frequency plots, which are outlining red. The bar graph at the bottom demonstrates an index that quantifies a difference that is not obvious to naked eye. For all of my hand images, I also put a ruler next to my hand for a sense of skill. However, for the purposes of this presentation, we will not go into matters of skill. Skill matters when creating specific predictive models based on age, sex, and disease state. In the picture at the upper left, the palms are facing down, the fingers are facing up, which we call north, and the right thumb is at the 9pm location, and shown by the bar graph. 
This tells us that sharing the same palm and finger parameters will also exhibit this index as being larger for the right side compared to the left side. Here is the table of rules that we came up with for telling left-handed from right-handedness. I also measured special cases where the hands are not flattened. We wanted to test how versatile our method is and how sensitive the method is to the hands that's in different positions. This helps us test if the rules we developed for flat hands still work, even when all the fingers are not spread out. Here is post hand. For post hand, my fingers are clenched into a fist. The palm is facing down, fingers are facing south, meaning they're down, and the right thumb at 3 p.m. The index of summing the frequency bars outlining red shows that right is still less than left. Here's pose 6. For pose 6, the palms are up, fingers are north, meaning they point up, and the right thumb is at 3 p.m. The index of summing the bars in red shows that right it's still greater than left. For pose 11, what I did was I flipped my hand so the palms are up, fingers point south, and the right thumb is at 9 p.m. After outlining the hands and doing the analysis, the index shows that the right is still less than left. Thus far, we have shown that the rules defining left and right work for conditions in which we know the direction of the palm and fingers, along with the location of the thumb. To take a further step, we applied the rules to adult hands and baby's hands just to prove that the rule still works. This is hands 2, which are a pair of larger hands. Let's see if my rules apply. For hands 2, the palms are up, fingers are heading north, making the right thumb at 3 p.m. The bar graph shows that right is greater than left, which matches what we have on the table that was based on my small, female hands. For hands 3, there are hands with a really different formation. The bar graph shows that the sum value for the middle bins for right is greater than for the left, which matches our rules. Lastly, hands 4, being a set of baby's hands, also work. The bar graph on the bottom shows that the right side is greater than left, which is consistent with our rules. Even though scientifically it's very cool to measure left and right hands, beyond the coolness, there can be a lot of medical applications using this technology. It comes down to whether we can just use smartphone cameras for tracking and early detection. For example, taking pictures of your hand periodically for related genetic disease. That would be very useful. Some potential application for measuring hand shapes could be used on rheumatoid arthritis, an autoimmune disease that affects joint linings, causing pain and swelling. Another application is on detecting one's risk for dementia. A study out of USC has provided evidence that the length of one's index and ring fingers is associated with one's risk for dementia. It can also be applied to congenital hand deformities in children. When early detection and consultation is especially important, the earlier, the better. It would also be useful for detecting hand or foot deformities due to Parkinson's disease, which helps with diagnosis for the disease. Our software can track the progress or recovery of claw deformities, which is when the fingers are bent like a claw. Lastly, our software can help track recovery from nerve injuries that affect hand morphology. For more information, please visit brainscanology.com. For consulting and software licensing, please email info at brainscanology.com. Thank you.